You are listening to the Ready PDM Network. Today's episode was brought to you by Eigenworks. Most companies don't know why they lose deals, and few know why they win. Eigenworks can tell you why. With the buyer as hero approach, Eigenworks gets deep insight into the reasons organizations make buying decisions. The product, promotion, and sales insights provide Eigenworks clients with a significant competitive position in their marketplaces. Are you ready? When I talk to presidents, they say things like, I expect product management to be my business leader at the product level. Chet Wrong! Chet Wrong here with the wrong way to do Agile. Today, retrospectives. A good way to start your retrospective is to identify the scapegoat. Somebody hasn't been pulling their weight, and by identifying the weakest link, you make the other team members feel better about themselves. Uh, all of them said, I want a, uh, a business person on the team who can make strategic decisions. If we have the data, well, well then let's look at the data. But if all we have is opinions, then we'll use mine. It was 2001 and a group of software visionaries gathered at a ski resort to share their experiences and figure out why so many software projects were failing. And so the Agile Manifesto was born, a declaration of four bold value statements that became the basis of a new approach to software development and would change the industry forever. Number one, individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Number two, working software over comprehensive documentation. Number three, customer collaboration over contract negotiation. And finally, number four, responding to change over following a plan. Uh, as we interviewed people, we heard, you know, time and again, uh, we need a place to store all these things that's not my hard drive. So you might ask yourself, what is a playbook? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a book of plays. It's a book that has all the plays that you use for your team in one location. General hindsight, what exactly is the difference between strategy and tactics? Well, it's a good question, and the answer is pretty simple. Tactics are your method of combat to win a battle. Strategy is choosing your battles wisely. Hello, Ready Product Radio heads, and welcome to another exciting episode of Ready Product Radio. Our guest this week is Steve Johnson from Under 10 Consulting and past instructor for many years at Pragmatic Marketing. Steve and I talk about the four types of expertise required for success in product management, as well as whether Agile is making product management too tactical. We also get a peek into a product Steve is building to make product management easier. Ready product principle number four is be a jack of all trades and a master of four, business, market, domain, and product. Enjoy the show. So Steve Johnson, godfather of product management, welcome to Ready Product Radio. Uh, you and I go way back, uh, but for the benefit of our audience, would you mind uh, giving an introduction of yourself, please? Sure. Um, I've spent the last few years working with teams on implementing best practices in product management. Uh, after many, many years in, as a trainer in product management, um, I kept hearing people say, you know, can you come back and help us? And, you know, I think it's one thing to get some good basic principles from a, a, a lecture style class, but it really gets interesting when, you, when the rubber hits the road and we start uh, actually trying to apply these concepts to uh, an individual business. And so I work with a small number of companies over a long term basis, uh, typically three to six months. Um, trying to help them, well, not trying, uh, successfully helping them <laughs> apply, you know, really good product management principles like, you know, how do we get from idea to revenue? You know, how do you do the various artifacts and, and steps of uh, today's uh, product development and product marketing? Mm -hmm. 
Excellent, excellent. And just for full disclosure, uh, we'll mention that that you're also a, a sponsor of this podcast. So thank you again for that. Uh, been instrumental in helping uh, us get the podcast off the ground. And I'm sure there's a large number of our listeners that don't actually need an introduction of you uh, because um, you're very well known to product managers. But uh, I am trying to aim this podcast as well at, at other folks like maybe UX designers, entrepreneurs. So there may be a couple of people out there that hadn't heard of you. So thanks for that introduction. <laughs> right. um, so, so Steve, I, I was looking at what you've been up to lately, and I, I usually try to pick three topics. And, and the three that I was thinking about for um, this morning was I noticed you've been talking a lot about uh, the, the four different types of expertise um, in uh, in product management uh, lately. So I thought that might be a good one. Uh, the second one that, that seems to be making a resurgence is this whole topic of agile and product management. And I know I gave a talk about that at, at Ottawa Product Camp recently, but I know you've been uh, uh, talking a lot and writing a lot about is agile making product management too tactile focused? Um, and then the third thing is, uh, you know, I, I hear after, you know, um, donating so much of your energy and passion, you know, training people on product management that you're actually working on a on a software product yourself these days. So do those three topics sound like good ones? Uh, yeah, that's right in the heart of the things that I'm thinking about right now. Awesome. That, that, that'd that be great. So why don't we just dive in uh, with the expertise topic. So talk to us about what, what you see as the four different uh, types of expertise that, that are important for product management. Great. Well, you know, when I started Under 10 Consulting uh, a few years ago, I started off by interviewing uh, about 100 people for um, the book that I ultimately wrote called Look Beyond the Product. And I, I kept hearing really disparate descriptions of the skill set for product management, but it, it drilled down into uh, some folks are expecting uh, very technical abilities in product management and others skew towards business and the the four expertise uh, four types of expertise that I heard about the most were um, product business market and domain mm -hmm. and the domain one is the one that is so uh, I don't know elusive <laughs> you know because <laughs> um, a lot of times the domain and the market overlap a lot or the domain and the product overlap a lot uh, but what's really somewhat disturbing is when you then look at job descriptions mm -hmm. and they say, okay, we're looking for somebody who has, you know, a computer science undergrad, a, a master's in business from university, um, also, you know, 15 years experience in our domain, uh, wants to travel 80% while also sitting 24 hours a day by the Agile team. <laughs> And, you know, they're just kind of impossible. You know, there was yeah. one in particular that struck me as just hysterical. They wanted 15 years experience in social media. Mm. Nice. And, you know, social media hadn't been around for 15 years, although, I, you know, I was blogging 15 years ago. But, you know, we didn't have Twitter and we didn't have other stuff. Yeah, if you, if you count uh, church gatherings, maybe it's a couple hundred years old. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, I, I get your point. Good point. Good point. <laughs> And so, you know, when I, when I work with uh, uh, product leaders, you know, they're looking at, you know, how do I uh, staff up my team? And, uh, you know, one of the things that I do is I go through and help them identify uh, what skills they currently have on staff. And they tend to, again, skew towards the technology side. Yep. And so we're, you know, so often lacking in business skills or market savvy. Mm-hmm. And the good news is all four of those can be learned. You know, um, the tricky one is, I suppose, domain. You know, there's a lot of subtlety in a domain that, uh, you know, you, your domain is, is, say, security, you know, and you've spent 10 years uh, in that space and you find yourself going, well, you know, th there's, there's subtleties there that a newbie might not be able to pick up. Like, you know, one way that hackers break into a website is they put a million characters in a field and it blows up the, the back end and suddenly they're, they're into your system. So um, I don't know enough about security to know much more than that. Uh, but if I was building a product that was predicated on security, then, uh, you know, I'd need to know more about the domain. Mm. 
Uh, one other quick story. Uh, I, I interviewed a, a product manager who uh, was who had a domain specialty or domain expertise in fraud, and he was recruited by a big company whose name you would know. And they sent out a note saying, hey, good news, we've hired this new product manager, and he used to be a vice president in a bank, and uh, he's going to be developing a fraud application for us. And his phone started ringing off the hook from salespeople who wanted him to go on sales calls with them to talk to bank people. Mm -hmm. And what they really wanted was his experience in banks, not his experience with fraud. Right. So what they were lacking was, you know, uh, we don't have anybody who understands that market well. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he spent, uh, you know, nine months going on sales calls and he was a darling of the sales force, but he never got to develop his fraud application and ultimately left and started his own company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a, that's an interesting one. So a couple of questions, Steve, on that, on that perspective. So one thing I'd like to bounce off with you, we, we work in Toronto here and I'm sure you, we, they do this in other markets with um, the various B schools. And I see a lot of MBAs that come out and they want to go directly into product management. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously they're, they're, they, they tick off the business uh, side because they've just come through an MBA program. What, what advice would you have for like uh, freshly minted MBAs? Would you suggest that they try to go directly into product management or, or would you suggest they, they go a, a, different, uh, a different path? Well, you know, um, they, you're right. They, uh, when, when people come out of an MBA program, they're well-versed in business. Although, uh, you know, I'm not sure how well they are able to apply what they've learned yeah, to, you know, uh, to practice in real life. Uh, but I would say it, it, um, the, the first thing they should do is get to know the technology. So, but, you know, build up their product expertise by working with support teams and working with development teams and working with professional services teams, if we have that, but also building up their um, market expertise. Mm -hmm. And that means, you know, going out and observing customers using the product and going out and interviewing prospective customers without a salesperson there to corrupt the system. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, looking at, okay, I'm strong in business, you know, mm -hmm. where am I weak? You know, I need to bump up market. I need to bump up product. Uh, and for, and probably if they're fresh out of business school, they also need to bump up domain. Yeah. And that means, you know, spending time with people who have spent their careers in, you know, whatever discipline your company is based, is based upon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. Um, the other, the other thought that occurred to me when you were describing those four domains is, um, depending on the market, I know having spent my career here 20 years in the Toronto area, I often have to sell against that domain expertise. In other words, I'm, I'm dealing with hiring managers that let's say it's a TELUS. I want somebody that's, that's, that's been 10 or 15 years in, in, in telco. Um, have you, have you seen that in your travels? Uh, uh, you know, in other words, are there specific tactics if one is deficient in a specific area? That, well, that's that you can really use. the, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's yeah, really the, the difficulty of a lot of job descriptions yeah. is they're asking for this super, super person. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I said at the beginning, you know, any of these skills can be learned. Uh, uh, the idea that we can find somebody, well, you know, actually I think what happens is they say, well, what we're really looking for is an existing product manager from our number one competitor who right. has 15 years experience and doesn't care to be promoted. <laughs> right. So yeah. it's like, you know, okay, I hear why that's beneficial to you as a, as an employer, but mm -hmm. why would it be beneficial to the employee? Mm -hmm. You know, I've already got this gig. Why would yeah. I want to have it again? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I think the important part is, you know, from a hiring manager standpoint, you really want to hire, you know, the, the best well-rounded athlete you can find yeah. and then identify areas of deficiency and say, you know, in the first three to six months, these are the areas where we want to expand your skill. Mm, yeah, that's nice. It's really, like not, it's really difficult to find somebody who's the perfect candidate. Uh, mm -hmm. because every organization is unique. You know, your company is different than my company is different than the other company. Yeah. And so 
you, you're not going to be able to quickly or easily find somebody who's dialed up perfectly to the parameters that you, yeah. you wish for. Yeah, exactly. And I, especially, I, I think I've talked to a lot of U.S. based product managers and, and I think just by virtue of the scale of the U.S. market, product managers can be more specialized in the U.S. But, but I think here in Canada, we're kind of forced out of economics to be more generalists, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's good. All right, Steve, why don't we, uh, why don't we transition to, to our second topic here? So uh, this is something I know that you and I are both passionate about. So um, agile, um, you know, some would think, listen, we, you know, we've been fighting this out. Agile has gone through the hype curve with regard to, to product management. We have product owners. We have product managers. So when you write that it's forcing us to be too tactical, what, 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 uh, what do you think the, the, the cost or the, or the damage is, is that's being done there? Talk, talk to us about that. Well, we, you know, the, the pendulum swings back and forth on uh, how companies define product management. Mm -hmm. And I, I think one of the difficulties is when you flip it around and you, you go to development and say, hey, what are you looking for from product management? And you tend to get a tactical answer. Mm -hmm. uh, but what's interesting is if you go back to, you know, all of the original writing around the various agile methods, mm -hmm. uh, all of them said, I want a, uh, a business person on the team who can make strategic decisions. Unfortunately, that's not what we've really seen implemented in my experience. Um, one of the things that, that I noticed is it, it seems that in many cases, the product owner role, which is a new one uh, in the world of Agile, uh, some companies redeploy product managers, other companies redeploy business analysts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as it's implemented, it's probably mo most product owners are probably more like a business analyst, a very tactical, technical person. Mm -hmm. And yet, again, back to the original literature, uh, they said from a product owner, we need somebody who can make business decisions. And so if you talk to <clears throat> developers about what do you want from product management, they typically say we want business thinking as well as market expertise, you know, mm -hmm. back to the expertise thing talking right. before. Uh, but then if you turn around and go talk to uh, the marketing team, you know, hey, what do you need from product management? They typically say, we need somebody who knows product. Mm -hmm. uh, typically product marketing or at least marketing communications doesn't seem to know very much about product after all. Mm -hmm. And so the product managers there are providing uh, product information to the marketing side. Um, what's truly interesting though, when you talk to uh, salespeople and say, you know, what do you need from product management? More than product, they typically say, we really need domain expertise. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that you've worked in a bank for 15 years mm -hmm. is more attractive than the fact that you understand how this product works. Mm -hmm. Right? So uh, the original idea of Agile. Uh, of, you know, say Scrum and XP of having a mm -hmm. business leader to answer developers' questions is, is spot on. Um, but in, in actual practice, we find, unfortunately, these people are so caught up in uh, daily operations of the product, mm -hmm. sitting next to the developers all day long, that uh, they don't have the opportunity to refresh their market skills and refresh their uh, domain skills. Mm -hmm. Uh, I actually invented a form of Scrum myself back in 1993. I didn't realize I was inventing <laughs> something, and I, I really should have written a book. But yeah. um, my, uh, I was hired as a product manager for a company based in Los Angeles, and I live in Virginia, just outside D.C. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, do you want to move to Los Angeles? And I'm like, no, I don't think so. You know, my kids are in school and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So what we did is I flew out to Los Angeles one week a month and I would fly out on the, on the, the first morning flight from DC and get to LA by lunchtime. And, and I'd spend the afternoon and uh, all of the next day doing really what we now call demos. You know, uh, what have you guys been working on for the last three weeks? You know, show me what you've done and I accept the work as complete. And we were doing an, uh, you know, an early form of, of Kanban or scrum bond. Mm -hmm. And so they would show me what they had worked on and then I would answer their questions about the persona and the business problems and we would discuss 
you know, there's a feature they're working on and they don't really understand the problem exactly. And so I talk to them about, here's my use scenario. And, uh, you know, here the, the product manager looks like this, or the, I'm sorry, the persona looks like this mm -hmm. and this is their workflow and this is what they're trying to accomplish. And, uh, I answer all their questions all week. And then I fly home on the Thursday night red eye and just be, you know, a disaster on Friday because the red eye is terrible mm -hmm. for everybody. Uh, but that was my week with development. And then mm -hmm. one week a month, I was available for sales calls. Mm -hmm. uh, one week a month, I dealt with corporate issues. And one week a month, I did product management. Yep. You know, the rest of it, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And that worked really well for, for us. Uh, mm -hmm. But as I've told that story since, people go, oh, you know, there's no way I could leave my dev team alone for a month. Uh, yeah. you know, and so, Hey, we can do the same thing on a kind of a weekly basis, you know, mm -hmm. schedule time Monday afternoon and Friday morning for your, uh, interaction with development. Mm -hmm. You say, you know, Tuesday's my corporate day, Wednesday's my sales day. And on Thursday, you know, I'll work from home and do product management. Mm -hmm. And that seems to work really well. Uh, in, in, uh, most of the companies that you know, I'm, I'm advising in my consulting practice, we're finding, I think in most cases, we're finding the success profile seems to be having both a product owner and a product manager. Mm -hmm. yep. That the product owner is embedded with the team and answering their questions and is getting refreshed with market and business uh, uh, expertise by a product manager who is more external than internal. Yeah, yeah, and that's where, uh, that's where the group got to uh, when I was in Ottawa. I, uh, I did a session titled, is, is Agile Killing the Product Manager? Uh, and it was largely a uh, sticker bait, right? To, <laughs> to try to get, uh, get some votes, but, but I made it very interactive and that's where the team seemed to settle. They said, you know, typically we see a product manager working with a product owner, but here's the challenge I threw out to the team and, and I'd like to hear your comments on this. When I looked at uh, surveys from Pragmatic Marketing, from 280 Group, from sequent learning, from various product management associations, um, the, 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 they were saying back when I took my training in the, in the late 90s, I, I went to San Francisco for pragmatic training in 97, uh, they seem to be complaining about the same things in 2015, which is exactly what you're saying, that, that I don't, I, the product manager doesn't have enough time for, uh, for strategic activities, too tactical. So how can that be if we've now got this product owner to buffer us, if you will, on the day-to-day mm -hmm. -day tactical? What, what do you think is the, the lingering issue? Well, you know, um, a, a different way of answering that is, okay. you know, as I work with, uh, uh, with executive teams on, you know, what is the right org chart, yep. uh, for instance, I do a lot of organizational design. Mm -hmm. uh, they say, well, you know, how many product managers do I need? And my answer is, well, it depends on how many other departments are hiding their headcount in product management. <laughs> um, so uh, one organization I'm working with, the sales department is expanding dramatically. Mm -hmm. But by sales department, that means quota carrying salespeople. Mm -hmm. They're not hiring sales engineers. They're just hiring salespeople. Mm -hmm. And so every time they hire, you know, a few salespeople, the salespeople turned on the product managers and say, you know, I know you had some strategic work to do, but I need you to go on a call with me. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, as marketing expands, uh, their outbound, uh, uh, social media marketing, yeah. Yeah. Content marketing, they turn to product management and say, you know, I know you had some things you wanted to do, but I need you to write this ebook. I need you to write, you know, one blog post a week. I need you to engage on Twitter and, you know, say good things about the company. Mm -hmm. And so because product, because Marcom uh, or Marcoms hasn't uh, staffed up with product marketing, they find themselves pulling product management into, you know, a lot of marketing programs. Mm -hmm. uh, and the same thing with development, you know, if they haven't hired an adequate number of product owners, um, then product managers spend a lot of their time doing product owner. The thing that really uh, is fascinating and, and a little bit frightening is when I talk to presidents, they say things like, I expect product management to be my business leader at the product level. Mm -hmm. uh, they're saying things like, 
I'm concerned that we don't have, we haven't had any new products delivered in the last year. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the things I, I ask often is, you know, what are your top priorities? And, and presidents are very straightforward. You know, the first priority is revenue. Yep. Right? Are we able to sell what we have? Mm -hmm. Their second priority is development. Mm -hmm. Are we able to build what we plan? And when they are satisfied with those two, the third step is product management. Are, mm -hmm. we, bu are we building new, the right new things? Mm -hmm. Right. Do, uh, how much of our revenue is coming from products that were developed in the last 18 months? Yeah, innovation, and, right. Right, and that's really frightening when you start looking at your allocation of resource. So I, I think because sales and development and marketing and you know, support and QA and all these other people rely on product management for operational support, mm -hmm. it really means that the strategic role of product management falls by the wayside which is why product managers need to be much more stringent on yeah. their calendar. You know, I, uh, you know, 10, 20, 15 years ago, I declared Thursday to be international product management productivity day. Yeah. I remember uh, that. Right. I want every product manager everywhere in the world to work from home on Thursdays to do their strategic job. Right. And then the other four days a week, you know, they can participate in everybody else's dysfunction. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And, and I've actually practiced that at various times in my career to different, differing levels of success, but, uh, but that, that, that's good. So, so what, what are some prescriptions here? I, I, I'm thinking about my current role because I do work with an agile team. They're based in Pune, India. Um, filling the product owner role is very difficult. Uh, in mm -hmm. fact, in fact, we find sometimes it's, it's actually a senior developer, uh, not even a business analyst that, that takes the role on, which gets gets us further afloat. Well, one idea, and I don't know if you've seen this, is uh, when you commented that 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 they don't get out in the field enough. I was wondering if, like, a military example of of a tour of duty is is a kind of thing. In other words, maybe product owner should be a rotating role. That that it's like going to the front lines. You do it for. I don't know, you pick pick a certain number of sprints or 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 a certain epic or something mm -hmm. and then and then you go back into the field. Is that kind of where your head's at or or Well, yeah, it is. Actually, one of the companies I'm working with right now um is concerned about, you know, they haven't had any new things happen in a while. Mm -hmm. And uh so, you know, too much of their revenue is coming from aging products. Right. And so what we're doing there uh, ties nicely into your statement. What we said was we're going to uh, create a, uh, a new initiative. They already know what it is. Mm -hmm. And we're going to hire a new product manager to live that initiative through the life cycle. Mm -hmm. So that means there's no daily operations uh, for the product because the product doesn't exist yet. Nice. Right. So he's going to, uh, this new person is going to go through the feasibility. They're going to do the, the product, uh, the problem solution fit. They're going to look at the product market fit. They're going to, uh, learn all the things that the organization needs to learn about this new thing. Mm -hmm. And to quote my friend, my friend, Saeed Khan, <laughs> they're going to, they're going to build it and then they're going to nail it before they scale it. Yeah. So, you know, the first phase is, uh, you know, validating in the market and building this thing. And then we move to the nail it phase mm -hmm. where we, uh, we build the sales enablement tools. We go on a lot of customer visits with salespeople mm -hmm. and see what messages resonate. Um, and then when we get to the scale it phase, you know, we've, we've got uh, everything, not just product, but all the go to market materials mm -hmm. proven. Yep. And then that person will become effectively the operations manager for the product uh, until it's retired or until uh, it, it doesn't need any sort of you know, business leadership. Mm -hmm. And that's going in parallel to the next project where we hire somebody to take an idea uh, all the way from idea to market. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be uh, a way <clears throat> of getting product managers out of doing too many things. Yeah. Uh, when I started this company, I, I struggled a, li a bit to come up with a, a name that really resonated. And, and mm -hmm. I chose under 10 
because I think that's how many things people can call, hold in their head. You know, I probably should have said, you know, under seven or you're under being three. generous. I was just going to say you're being generous. Yeah, <laughs> I struggle with six sometimes, but yeah. Yeah. And my thought was, you know, we ought to have a 10 step process to go from idea to market. You yeah. know, we should have no more than 10 personas. We should have no more than, you know, 10 projects under in flight. Yeah. And a, as I, embrace this idea with the teams I'm working with, uh, it, it really is instead of one pro, uh, two or three product managers having 10 or 20 products, mm -hmm. um, as we've got a new initiative that's, you know, way out in horizon three, we have this one product manager and one product and he takes it all the way from cradle to grave. Yeah. And that's so much more, uh, productive and effective than mm -hmm. having, a thousand, uh, you know, a thousand operational issues coming at you and also trying, right, to be strategic. I've always thought it was really funny when I saw ampersands in titles. <laughs> you know, the VP of sales and marketing makes no sense to me, right? Mm -hmm. VP of sales says, you know, it's, it's thinking about today or this quarter. Yep. VP of marketing is about next year. V, yeah. uh, VP of research and development always throws me because everyone in that department thinks they're in research and everyone else wishes they were in, you know, development. But uh, having a product manager responsible for daily operations and supporting the sales team mm -hmm. and supporting QA and support doesn't leave any bandwidth for sh shepherding a product from yeah. idea to market. Yeah, one of the key things that that I and many many people picked up from yourself and and Pragmatic over the years is this notion of there are roles in the organization that are n equals one focused, right? Mm -hmm. And sales sales is a good example of that. But then there's other roles like product management, uh, like marketing, where, like finance, where it's n equals many, right? Mm -hmm. And and exactly. uh, and like you say, it's it's probably the rare individual that can really uh, uh, change that aperture on a, you know, on a daily basis. Right. Yeah. And yeah. You know, that comes from Peter Drucker. Peter Drucker yeah. said in every organization, yeah. every job should either be associated with individual customers right. or be associated with a market full of customers. Yeah. You know, the N equals one, N equals many concept. Yeah. And to your point, I mean, it's, it's impossible to do the market of many when you're being pulled into individual customer issues. Yeah, exactly. And that's why, that's why, as you say, I agree with you hundred percent, the sales and marketing doesn't make sense because the sales VP cannot help but be biased by the last three conversations sure. that he or she had. And that doesn't necessarily reflect the market. That's awesome. Okay, Absolutely. Steve, I want to, I want to, I want to respect your time because I know you're a busy guy. Uh, why don't we leave that one there and go on to our third topic. Um, so, so as I as I said, after spending you know twenty plus years teaching uh, guys like me and and thousands of others how to do product management, you're you're also uh, now doing your own software product uh, here. So, uh, can you talk to us about that and and what the goals and the user personas are, and maybe when we might see something uh, out in the real world, as they say, out in the wild. Out in the wild. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, um, I it. When I talk to companies uh, about, you know, methodology and roles and responsibilities, you know, invariably it comes up, uh, you know, but where's the software? You know, what software do product managers use? And, and the sad truth is, you know, the number one thing that product managers use is Microsoft Office. Mm -hmm. Right. So our roadmaps are in PowerPoint and our requirements document is in Word. And, uh, you know, our business case is in Excel. Mm -hmm. um, and even there, the really frightening part is it's all stored on my local hard drive. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the customers I worked with said it so clearly. He said, you know, where's the JIRA for product managers? Mm. Well, and, well put, yeah. You know, uh, and JIRA is a wonderful tool. Yeah, yeah for developers, mm -hmm. right? And so we're trying to, you know, take that hammer and use it as a screwdriver in, mm -hmm. in this new application. So uh, I worked years ago with a buddy uh, who has been a developer as well as a product manager. Mm -hmm. And he and I got together and said, you know, is this a, you know, is this a big enough problem? Mm -hmm. And uh, as we interviewed people, we heard, you know, time and again, 
Uh, we need a place to store all these things that's not my hard drive. Right. And it's not SharePoint because SharePoint is where documents go to die. Right? <laughs> I mean, you can put them there, but no one will ever find them again. Yep. So, you know, the first thing was just a repository for all of the various artifacts. Like, you know, where's your persona document? You know, where's your uh, problem statements? Where's your positioning? Uh, and... Uh, one story my, my development friend told me was he stumbled across my business case back uh, when he was a product manager at the same company I was in. Mm -hmm. And he's like, why wasn't I given this the day I showed up? Mm -hmm. and, you know, where was that stored? And, and, and it's like, oh, yeah, that was on SharePoint. No, you know, no wonder yep. no one found it. But somebody had printed it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so... That was our first wave, and we, we started this a, a while back. We now have the repository thing working, and okay. so I encourage people to go to under10playbook.com mm -hmm. and sign up for a free license and give us your feedback. Uh, the uh, first phase is uh, centralizing the data. Mm -hmm. uh, the next phase is, is uh, focus more around uh, coaching. Mm -hmm. you know, you're a new product manager. You've been told to, you know, manage the product, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, and, and maybe you're lucky and you're taking over for, you know, an existing product. Mm -hmm. So you've got some things available to you. But we start with, you know, the under 10 methodology of, you know, let's define what market we're serving and what personas we have. And let's decide, determine what problems we're going to address in our product and, mm -hmm. and we'll fold it into releases and so forth. And so we're rolling the activities out now. We've got uh, some simple reports uh, like. Uh, along the way, you'll need to brief executives. So there's an executive briefing. And, uh, you know, as we uh, roll it out to market, there's a marketing briefing mm -hmm. and so forth. So we're doing the whole MVP Agile thing. You know, the first MVP was just storing the artifacts. And right. uh, the next MVP is, is uh, you know, the, the activities of going from idea to market. And then we'll work on, you know, in the next phase, you know, how do we empower others? Uh, so maybe, ooh, here's a crazy thought. Maybe they can search for the information they need online instead of having to call, you know, 1-800-I-CAN'T-READ and talk <laughs> to a product manager. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we're doing with Playbook, under 10 playbookcom and it's available now in a, you know, in a beta form. And mm -hmm. uh, who knows, in the the new year we may see uh well we're definitely going to see some new functionality coming out shortly good 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 and and as we as we kind of wind down here steve um why don't you give us a sense as well i i i've been monitoring our listeners and uh they are global uh it's uh, it's been interesting so can you talk about your about under 10 consulting the consulting business uh, are you mainly focused in the US or, or will you go to to other uh, geographies uh, you know Canada Europe uh, um, any anything you can tell us in terms of uh, you know geographic uh, focus for under 10 consulting sure you know the internet is a marvelous thing <laughs> yeah we're using it right now indeed uh, so uh, yes I have uh, just returned recently from Ireland Okay. Uh, I have done uh, work in uh, all sorts of uh, parts of Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, I am up to Toronto a couple of times a quarter. Okay. Um, I say, and I have com customers, you know, all over the U.S. Mm -hmm. But you know, as I said at the beginning, I'm working with a small group over a period of time. So mm -hmm. um, typically, it begins with uh, I typically begin with a two-day getting to know you face-to-face -face yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, but some of my customers, for instance, uh, we do monthly webinars mm. with their team, you know, so they've met me, you know, we, we met at their big, you know, product management offsite, whatever. And then every month we have a two hour or 90 minute to, to two hour webinar uh, mm -hmm. where there we t uh, touch on one topic. We mm -hmm. drill down on it as far as, as we're all able to go and uh, discuss how it can be applied in their business. And because it's a private setting, you know, they can, they can tell all their secrets. <laughs> yeah. So uh, one of the companies I worked with was particularly satisfying. We did that for a year. 
And at the end of the year, I said, you know, you guys have this, you know, you need to keep it going, you know, have these monthly meetings. And I, I talked a, a, a couple of weeks ago to the principal there who said, you know, we haven't had one of these meetings since you hosted the last one. I knew you were going to say that. Right. So yeah. uh, they're going to, it looks like they're going to renew with me again yeah. so that we, it, 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 whether I have anything to, to say in those webinars or not, of course, you know, yeah. I would, but um, having a f kind of a forced engagement yep. causes yep. everybody to like get ready at the last minute. Yeah. So, yeah. So. It's like, it's like your Thursday concept, but just at a different scale at a different level. Indeed. Um, yeah. So yeah. I do business uh, 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 over the internet, uh, over the phone, yeah. over Skype. And uh, you know, I'm, ho I, I think it's a, Rather than having, you know, a, an intense two, three, four day engagement mm -hmm. where people are kind of overwhelmed by the amount of information I can share, mm -hmm. uh, we spread that over, you know, six, nine, 12 months. And that way we can touch on one topic, we can drill really deeply on it. And then mm -hmm. I can give them an assignment that they can follow up with me through email and say, okay, here I developed my persona, you know, based on our conversation, you mm -hmm. know, can you look it over and give me some feedback? Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. One of the, one of the things I'm thinking about, Steve, maybe if the, you know, uh, if the opportunity presents itself is kind of like an AMA type thing, um, maybe next year sometime where we, and, and maybe it's yourself or maybe we get a couple of folks together and, and have kind of some live audience interaction where they can post questions, uh, whether it's on Reddit or Slack or, or whatever. And, um, you know, um, uh, have an interaction that way. I think that might be cool as well. Well, um, I always look for opportunities to engage with product managers, product owners, product yeah. strategists, and, uh, you know, I always come away at least with a blog post out of it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep it, keep it stewing, keep it stewing. So listen, I, I want to respect your time. There's a, there's a final question that I ask all of the guests, uh, Steve, and, uh, and it's this, um, you know, uh, a lot of our listeners are probably earlier in their career. So uh, the question is, if you were to, able to go back, you know, we just we just uh, a couple months ago passed the uh, Back to the Future anniversary. So mm -hmm. if you could get in that DeLorean and go back 15 or 20 years and give some advice to the 15 or 20 year younger Steve Johnson about uh, product management or about business in general, uh, what would that advice be and, and, and why? Sure. Um, you know, I wish I had learned earlier the power of customer quotes. Mm. You know, when I, in my first job, you know, I wasn't that clear on the role of product management and, you know, I encounter, encounter that today. You know, people take new jobs and, and they're, they're not really sure whether they're the boss or the servant or the support or the project manager. And, uh, Surely, you know, in some of the discussions about product managers being a very technical, tactical role, mm -hmm. uh, it seems that there's an awful lot of opinions going on. <laughs> and I remember so vividly a, a wonderful quote that we used to use in, in, in my training class in my old company, um, which is uh, from Jim Barksdale. He mm -hmm. said, if we have the data, well, well, then let's look at the data. But if all we have is opinions, then we'll use mine. <laughs> and I certainly see that. Yeah, isn't it? I, I see that so often when we now talk about, you know, Hippo, the highest important person's opinion. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I remember one of the one of the things we had at Pragmatic was was wonderful. It was a, a coffee mug that said, mm -hmm. "Your opinion, while interesting, is irrelevant." Yeah. And uh, my little spin on that was, hey, guys, this is a left-handed mug. The message is not for everybody but you. The mm -hmm. message is for you. Because <laughs> um, in a world where there are opinion, plenty of opinions, yeah. um, the product manager is the one who needs to say, but here are what the facts are. 78% mm -hmm. of our customers are reporting this problem, mm -hmm. as opposed to, uh, you know, I talked to a guy, which, you know, to a salesperson is a completed research study. Yeah. <laughs> right? um, yeah. So if I, if, you know, if I could go back 20 years, I would certainly say, and, and my advice to, to anybody coming up is the sooner you get it into your head that the job is uh, about 
digesting facts mm -hmm. and having uh, customer anecdotes at the ready. Yeah. And you look at so many organizations, sales have, salespeople have huge credibility. And mm -hmm. that's largely because they're the only ones who have customer experience. Mm -hmm. uh, except, you know, as you said a moment ago, uh, they have experience one at a time. Right. Product managers need to have personal experience that exceeds the salesperson's experience that says not only these are the customers we have now and the prospects we're working, but the potential market as well. So anyway, uh, my advice is the sooner you embrace that your role is to um, be expert on the market and their problems, mm -hmm. uh, the sooner you get yourself out of my opinion is this, you know, let's fight with our opinions. I can right. fight. I can fight with data and it's not really about you're right. I'm wrong. It's about market facts are right mm -hmm. and opinions uh, are wrong. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's got them, but often they stink as they say. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Steve, this has been, uh, this has been awesome. Um, if, uh, if we've got listeners who, who uh, have had a follow up question for you or, we're intrigued with something you said and wanted to get some more. Is there some contact information that you're comfortable sharing with the audience? Well, sure. Um, I can be reached through email, of course, uh, at uh, steve at under10consulting.com. Uh, I'm a, uh, a pretty prolific blogger, I guess. And so check out my blog at under10consulting. Uh, and I also am uh, pretty active on, on Twitter. So you can follow me at sjohnson717. Um, and if you go to the website under 10 consulting, there's a, a thing on the right hand side that allows you to send me a question straight from there. Awesome. Awesome. And just, just to, just to remind us and the playbook is under 10 playbook.com. Is that correct? Yeah. The software is under 10 playbook. Okay, good, good. And good. My, my consulting site is under 10 consulting. Good, good. Awesome. Well, Steve, uh, hopefully we can do this again. Uh, on behalf of our listeners, I want to thank you, A, for, for sponsoring the podcast um, and uh, helping us cover some costs, uh, and B, taking you know, uh, basically an hour out of your very busy day to uh, speak with us. I'm sure uh, our audience is just going to love this discussion and, and lots of great content, as always. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. And I'm, pl I'm proud to sponsor your program. I'm really, uh, it's fun to listen to different perspectives and it's always kind of fun to hear, you know, my little promo at the beginning. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay. Well, have a great day, Steve. All right. You too. Today's podcast was brought to you by Eigenworks. Eigenworks specializes in win-loss analysis and customer development as a service. Get candid feedback to improve your sales approach, uncover competitive intelligence, and help you pivot as needed. Thank you for listening to this episode of Ready Product Radio, part of the Ready PDM Network. This is when most podcasters ask you to leave a review on iTunes if you like the show. My only request is if you found the show entertaining, inspiring, or informative, please share it with a colleague or friend who may feel the same way. Also, note that the views expressed in this episode do not necessarily reflect my views or the views of the Ready PDM Network. If you want yourself or your product to be ready, then keep your eyes on your markets, your ears to your customers, your mind on their experiences, both good and bad, and finally, keep your hearts in your products. Until next time, thank you for listening. You can contact us on Twitter at Ready Product Radio. That's R-D-Y-P-R-O-D-U-C-T-R-A-D-I-O. And on the web at www.readyproductradio.com. <laughs> Jude, mate, what do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.